Hello and welcome to Stratford Valley. My name is Joe and this is the news for Tuesday the 9th of August. What a show we've got coming up today. Uh, we've got <laughs> Manchester United. <laughs> this is Ethan's fault. Um, Right, United have been linked with Milinkovic, Savage, and Adrian Rabia. What a start! I'm in one of the best moods I've ever been in, and I have no idea why. Um, Manchester United are awful. We're buying awful players, but we'll get into all of that. I don't know why I'm, I'm laughing so much already. Right, let's just start off how we mean to go on. Get your comments in. We are live, so make sure you get your comments in. Also, hit subscribe. I blame Ethan for this. Absolute carnage on a Tuesday morning. Um... Take a breath. We're all here for the news. That's the most important thing. So let's start with uh, Rabio and Milinkovic Savic. We saw all this stuff coming out about Rabio yesterday. Manchester United are interested in him. A deal has been agreed with Juventus for the fee. Looks to be around £15 million, which I think is a decent deal. I know there's different people think he's not good enough to replace this or good enough to replace that. We need midfielders, um, and I think he's a decent option that is available for under 20 million quid. You don't get much for that these days, do you? Um, we'll bring you the latest on that. The big thing here, though, um, coming from uh, Jason Burt, I believe, um, in... Is it Jason Burt? It is Jason Burt, yeah. Uh, in the Telegraph, so obviously very reliable... Um, that Manchester United are now also interested in, into Milinkovic Savic, someone that we've been rumoured to, to be in for for, what, five or six years, seemingly always on the cusp of something, never actually turning into anything. Now it looks as though there is concrete interest in Milinkovic Savic. So we'll, we'll start with that. This is coming from Jason Burt. So it's a sort of a round up and a wrap up of United's interest in Adrian Rabio. United are pushing ahead with a surprise bid for Juventus' Adrian Rabio again. This is Jason Burt from The Telegraph. Uh, and they are considering a move to finally sign Lazio's Sergei Milinkovic Savic as they attempt to rescue what has become a frustrating transfer window. Um, a fresh offer for Marco Arnautovic is also expected, but we'll come to news on him in, in a few minutes. Um, interestingly, though, um, this he says here that the moves for Rabiot and potentially Savage follow the growing frustration, the uh, realisation, sorry, that Frankie de Jong, United's number one target through the summer, does not want to join them. The Dutch midfielder is intent on staying at Barcelona. We'll come to that again in a minute as well. Andy Mitten's provided a bit of an update on that. Um, Here's the crucial part. They're considering offering Milinkovic Savic a contract extension. That's Lazio. His current deal expires in 2024. So far, a price has not been set, but it would take around £50 million, which is less than De Jong's valuation, with talks at a very early stage as United consider um, the offer. So this is a player that has clearly been in the eyes and minds of Manchester United for a long time. We've, we've seen this you know, for years. Like I said, he's been linked with Manchester United. Um, and now it looks as though, you know, there are reliable journalists finally saying we actually are interested in him. £50 million, pounds, which, you know, obviously I was saying yesterday that I think if we sign Rabio, we could still sign De Jong or we could still sign uh, another um, midfielder that is a more expensive, kind of high profile, straight in the first team, playing every week type player. I don't think Rabio is quite that. Um, but if we were to sign Milinkovic Savic at £50 million, pounds, that is your big money signing, isn't it? So that's where you have to question, is he as good as De Jong? Does he do the things De Jong can do? He's obviously a very good player, Milinkovic Savic, and he's always one of those players um, that when you look at his stats, uh, and I don't mean stats as in goals and assists, I mean the kind of, you know, the slightly deeper stats. He's always someone that looks absolutely excellent. His attacking stats, his uh, his passing stats, and even his sort of some of his defensive stats are always absolutely high-end. Um, when you look at his 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 uh, assists, his uh, shot creating actions, his expected assists, his, his non-penalty goals, his uh, touches and progressive passes received, his dribbles completed, all of these things are in the 85th percentile and above. Um, he's, you know, genuinely elite at a lot of things, but again, he's playing in the, in the Serie A, which isn't necessarily, you know, a, a league, the standard of the Premier League, but... He's statistically someone that always stands out around Europe as being an incredibly well-rounded player. Um, and I think he's got that work ethic and that work rate as well um, that we've maybe not seen from some of our sort of well-rounded players in the past. I think a lot, of, a lot of clubs these days, especially the top clubs, tend to almost shy away from well-rounded in favour of specialists. Like you look at Liverpool's midfield, 
Wijnaldum was the last kind of well-rounded player that they had in there, and they got rid of him. I, I suppose Dean Henderson's of a similar cut, but he's getting older now. You know, you've got Fabinho in there, who is a specialist at that sort of de defensive role, winning the ball back, playing the ball short, um, you know, progressing play. You've got Thiago, who is an absolute specialist in holding possession, 60, 70, 80, 90 passes a game. Um, even you look at Man City, De Bruyne, he's not, he's not a tackling all-action midfielder. He's a on the ball maestro. Then you've got Rodri, who is that metronome in there. It's rare that you see the top, top teams with players like Savic or Pogba, um, because generally it's better to have a specialist doing a job than a player that's a kind of jack of all trades doing each job, you know, more often, but not to the, quite the same high, high end ability. So um, I wonder if Savic is, is the right player from that regard, but Get your comments in. Get your thoughts on Milinkovic Savic because these are the first real concrete rumours that United have been linked to him. And it is Jason Burt from The Telegraph, who, like we said, is a very reliable um, journalist. Um, personally, I think he'd be a decent signing. It's just whoever we get, it's going to feel like a letdown, isn't it? It's going to feel like a letdown after if it's not Dion. And I don't. And I think it's going to be really difficult to sh to shake that feeling um, for a lot of United fans that you know, this isn't the person who we wanted. This isn't the play we wanted. This is a backup. Um, so, you know, you spend 50 million on, on Milinkovic Savic, which I think would be a decent fee. You know, we spent that on Fred. We spent that on Wan Bissaka. You know, you look at some of the fees being touted around Europe this summer, 62 million on Cucurella. I think we're looking at an 80 million euro bid, 80 million pounds potentially for uh, Wesley Fofana to go from Leicester to Chelsea when he's just been out injured all season and he's you know, an upcoming good player, but come on. So I think 50 million in the current mar in the current market would be a decent fee for Milinkovic Savic. Um, let's get into some of the comments then. Um, Savic would be an awesome signing, let's hope. Um, Milinkovic Savic is five years too late. 50 million is too much. 40 million would be fair, but frankly, we need better quality than either of these players. Uh, can I be positive on why we are targeting Rabio? He's a deep line playmaker who has defensive numbers for 15 million. Uh, Scone, or Sc how do I'm not I'm never sure how to pronounce that. Um, Scona was of a similar profile as Rabio, and he played with De Jong. Um, uh, Mark Griffiths, Griffiths with a super chat is not putting anything on that, but thank you very much, Mark. Um, I'm um, someone saying what happened to Rodriguez. This guy is better than Fabinho. Well, we'll see. Uh, Milinkovic Savic is a good player. Just wish we were getting Frankie De Jong. I think that is that sentence there sums up how he will be spoken about and how he will be thought about by not just United fans but the media, social media. Uh, you know, I think every sort of facet of football. Looking at this deal, we'll say, well, he's good, but he's not De Jong. You know, United didn't get the number one target. United have got a, a, a cut price, you know, backup option, which just doesn't look good, does it? And it's going to take him a lot to sh to shake that kind of almost like a like a, a weight on his shoulders of you've got to be as good as or better than Frankie De Jong, which we don't even know how good he would be for United. If he doesn't sign for us, we don't know. But the expectation in people's heads is he was going to change everything. He was going to make this team tick. So if, if, if Milinkovic Savic comes in and isn't a world-class um, improvement to this squad, he's always going to be looked at as worse than De Jong. So I think it's a lot of pressure on his shoulders. But again, United are still weighing up whether to go all in for uh, Milinkovic Savic. I think based on the idea that De Jong may still join United, if we just could switch the order and go straight to that De Jong, the, the, the De Jong stuff, um, because that's um, from uh, Andy Mitten, who is talking about um, De Jong uh, and stuff uh, yesterday, I, th I believe, um, on the Talk of the Devils podcast. Um, he was saying how he thinks, um, if I can just get this up here, um, he said, uh, Man United wouldn't be doing this if they didn't think they had a chance. I'm actually more optimistic of him joining United than I was a week ago. That's um, Andy Mitten yesterday on Frankie De Jong. Again, that's an opinion piece, but that is the opinion of someone who is very well sourced, who has contacts in and around Spain and Manchester and these sorts of areas. So he's someone that isn't just saying that based on you know a fan opinion. Whilst he is a fan of Man United, he that's you know a very well researched and sourced opinion where he's saying he still thinks there is a good chance that Frankie De Jong could join Manchester United. And I think that's why Savage is on the back burner for now. I mean, obviously, there comes a time where United have to go, we aren't taking this any further. If this isn't happening, we have to sign replacements. But let's be honest, right? And this I'm not saying this from a perspective of I want this to happen. 
we've all been Manchester United fans for at least five years. Even if you're 10 or 13, you can probably remember five years ago being a United fan. This is what we do. We always take it to deadline day. We got Cavani on deadline day. We, we, we got Igalo on deadline day, trying to get Josh King on deadline day. We got Berbatov on deadline day. Like, we always do this. We wait till the last minute. We got Bruno, it wasn't quite deadline day, but it was the very end of the January window. We know who the target is, and we wait till the last day of the window. I expect to be sat here in three weeks' time on the 1st of September when the, when the window is going to close, saying, I wonder if we can get De Jong over the line. I think we've got backup options. We're making bids. We're making approaches for these two or three backup options. But I think we still think we're going to get De Jong, and I think it's going to go right to the very end of the window. The latest thing is that they're threatening legal action against him. Um, Barcelona, they're saying that, do you know that contract you signed in 2020 where we took your wages up by, we sort of doubled them or whatever it was? Um, well, that wasn't legally binding. That was signed by um, some real dodgy people. And those dodgy people was us. So they're going to take him to court and go, Your Honour, this man has signed an illegal contract. Do you know how we know that? We gave it to him, okay? Take him away. How, how, what kind of logic is that? Like a drug dealer going into a thing going, Your Honour, this man here has bought a kilogram of cocaine. Um, the man is a criminal. He shouldn't be on our streets. Good question. How do I know he bought a kilogram of cocaine? I sold it to him. Take this man away. He's a disgrace. Barca, you, you're fooling yourselves, man. You, you, this is, is, what is this? Admit to a crime to get him to, to take less money. Doesn't make any sense. You can't admit to crimes that you committed to try and get someone else to lose money. It's the most stupid logic I've ever heard in my life. This man disposed of a body. Do you know I know? Because I killed that person. Take him away. Unbelievable. You did it, Barca. You gave him the contract that was illegal. You can't have him losing out here. Anyway, so they're trying to sue themselves so that he loses money or something. I don't even know what they're doing now. Um, but I can't see that ending well with Barcelona. For me, the way he's handled this is... is in, the, in the, the steps of a person that knows they're leaving, but doesn't want to give anything away. If he was really going to stay, he would have taken a pay cut by now. I really do think he would have. He would have taken a pay cut and he would have said, I will do anything to stay at Barcelona. Um, I love this club. Da, 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 da. All he's, he's, he's not said anything. He said privately and publicly, you know, I play for Barcelona. I want to stay here, all that stuff. But he's not taken any action to stay at Barcelona. I understand that, obviously, there is this thing where he could just play for them, get the money he's owed, but, but Barcelona are really doing everything they can to force him out. He would have had something to say about the fact that he's having the piss taken out of him by the club that he pay, uh, plays for. So the fact that he hasn't said anything like that suggests to me this is all his legal team saying, sit tight, hold out, we'll get you the money, and then you can make a move. I genuinely think that's the case because the way he's acted is like he's having to keep quiet. Because some of the stuff they're doing, the fact that he's never commented on it, suggests to me that it's like, just bide your time. This is all a bit of a game of poker. I still think he'll move. It could be to Chelsea. It could be to United. I think De Jong won't be at Barcelona at the end of the window. They can't, they can't register off their players. Anyway, let's move on, shall we? Um, there is some talk. Um, not only will Rabio be replacing... Um, McTominay at Manchester United, but McTominay might be replacing Rabio at Juventus. Um, this is a very interesting development coming from the mirror. I mean, again, it could just be a sort of a, 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 a thought out that would make sense. One plus one equals two type article. Um, but there is a suggestion that McTominay uh, could be uh, on the way to um, Juventus to replace Paul Pogba. Um, again, who knows if that's possible? Uh, but let's let's read some of this then. Um, uh, with the boss still, sorry, with the boost to Lacuna Manchester Sky, reports of a swift and decisive action have now emerged. Arnautovic is, is to be one target, and they've already seen a bit of 7.6 million turned down. We'll, again, we'll come to more of that. And that would give Ten Hag another forward option, but it doesn't solve the biggest problem in his squad, the centre of midfield. Uh, Pogba, Matic, and, and uh, Mata have all left on a free, which of course we know. Um, but the interesting thing here. Um, is the talk around Scott McTominay. Turin news outlet Juve Dipendenza 
There you go. Suggest that McTominay could go the other way uh, with Juventus earmarking him as a potential replacement for the injured Paul Pogba. Juve boss Massimo Allegri is, is set, said to be, it says set to be a huge fan, which doesn't make any sense. Like he's not a big fan yet, but very soon he'll be a big fan. I think it's meant to say is said to be a huge fan of the Scotland internationals tactical discipline despite coming in for a flack uh, for his showing versus Brighton. You know, uh, McTominay started the base of midfield. Don't need to get into that. That's what we're hearing, you know, reports in Italy saying that Scott McTominay could come in to replace the injured Paul Pogba. Haven't we seen that before? Isn't that basically why he plays for Manchester United, coming in to replace the injured Paul Pogba? He's just got a career g dancing around Europe, replacing an injured Paul Pogba like he's some kind of... Do you know, in, in cricket, when a batsman gets injured, so they have someone run for them. That's who Scott McTominay is. Pogba's out. Get the runner in! McTominay just stands next to the wicket and sprints after Pogba hits the ball. That's what they should do, actually. Pogba stands in the centre circle, spraying passes, and McTominay runs around for him, but Pogba's not allowed to move. That's a good little tactic. Can you do that? I don't know. We'll see. Um, so there, there's the latest on Scott McTominay potentially going the other way. Personally, I think that there is no chance that's going to happen. That feels to me very much like, a, well, they need a midfielder, and they're buying one, and we always talk about swap deals because it just gets more names in the article. So let's um, put that um, out there that Scott McTominay could go the other way. Massimo Allegri is set to be a huge fan of his, apparently, which doesn't make any sense. Um, but I don't think that will happen. But again, that is what's been reported. Let's move on to Arnautovic. Um, very interesting stuff, this. Um, and I don't actually have the quote in front of me. So if someone can send me the quote regarding Arnautovic's future, um, that would be fantastic. Um, oh, actually, I do have it. Thank you. Right. Bologna director Marco Di Vaio, who is, you know, obviously he plays for Bologna. Um, he said, Man United on Arnautovic. Like question mark line. <laughs> Never heard of it. Uh, we're proud of Man United's interest for Marco, but we're not planning to sell him. We want to keep him at Bologna. Um, he's a key part of our project. There's not even a price tag. Well, I've been in some fancy shops before. Do you know when a shop is so fancy that the stuff doesn't even have tags on it? We, we stayed in a hotel in, in um, where was it, in Melbourne. And in the lobby of the hotel, there was like a Louis Vuitton shop. And me and Jay walked around it trying sunglasses on, which apparently you're not meant to do because that scares off the clientele who actually might buy something. But nothing had tags on it. How rich do you have to be to get to the counter before knowing how many thousands of pounds you're going to spend? That is unbelievable. That's why I shop at the pound shop only. You know before you go in how much stuff costs. Um, but apparently there's no price tag on him. Um, Rumours that we've had a £7 million bid rejected. There were also more people coming out and saying, we're going to go back in for him. There was other reports saying that, uh, that personal terms have been agreed. This is one of those deals where, of course, personal terms have been agreed. Do you not think he would be biting your hand off? Or who was it, David Moyes, who was inaccurately quoted as saying, he'd suck your hand off to play for Manchester United. And I genuinely think he would. Like a koi carp, he would absolutely suck your hand off. So I think the only stumbling block with this one would be the fee to Bologna, which again rumoured that we've had a bid between seven and nine million pounds, I don't even know what that means, um, rejected for him and that we might go back in. Um, I can't even believe that there's no one better than him around for seven to nine million quid. Um, but again, that's the current state of Manchester United. Right, we're going to be back this afternoon. Uh, we'll be looking at what is going on at Manchester United, why Ten Hag is being let down and whose fault it is that we're in the position we're in where once again... We have underspent, we've under-recruited, we have been linked with some of the most farcical names around Europe, and it's all within one week of the season. It already feels like things have come crashing down. That will be coming out tonight. But before that, we will have the paddock chat as well with Kirsty and Ange with a very special guest on that. So make sure you check that out. Also, please hit like on the video. Let's try to get to a thousand likes on the video. And if you haven't already hit subscribe, we're live all the time. We were live with breaking news yesterday about Rabio that that deal had been agreed. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you see us go live first. Hit the notification bell as well. So every time we're live, you can be here. The link for that is in the chat. Just click it, hit subscribe, done, dusted, no problem. Thank you very much for joining us. Again, any breaking news will be here and live on Stretford Paddock. We'll see you in a bit.